This is Twit. Now, you probably all connect your your device to a Wi-Fi network, whether it's in a hotel or maybe even a library or whatnot. Well, mobile device OSs, they continue to advance themselves over time by also providing extension points into their kernel or to their service layers to allow third parties or OEMs to plug in there. And an example would give you here is when you connect to a Wi-Fi network, sometimes it requires you to pop up a web login box, a UI there that to actually log in first, like a hotel does that. Now, iOS is known to allow these integration points, usually at a much slower pace than, let's say, Android. However, just recently, a new bug has surfaced as it relates to an integration point for iOS's Wi-Fi settings. In fact, there's a bug in OS, iOS that disables Wi-Fi connectivity when a device is join a network that uses a booby-trapped name. Now, researcher actually disclosed this over the weekend. In fact, by connecting to a Wi-Fi network that uses the SSID pound P, pound S, pound S, pound S, pound, S, pound N, we got all those, bunch of quotes there, iPhones and iPads lose the ability to join the network or any other networks going forward. Now, reverse engineer Carlo Shu actually found this. Unfortunately, when issues like these are made public rather than maybe bug bounties or whatnot. Hackers and trolls just jump on it and take advantage of it and before they're actually patched. Now, Carl actually is the owner of the hacking resource group Secret Club. Initially saw how easy it was to actually restore it and, and remove the Wi-Fi capabilities. Eventually, he found that users could reset network functionality by opening settings, general reset, reset network settings. Now, Apple, Apple representatives didn't respond to emailed questions, including if there was plans to fix the bug and whether it affected Mac OS or other Apple offerings as well. Now, Carl said in the internet message that the bug is caused by the internal logging functionality in the iOS Wi-Fi daemon, and he, which uses the SSID inside of a format expression. Now, the condition makes it possible in some cases for unauthorized formatting strings to be injected into sensitive parts of the highly fortified Apple OS. And he uh, and other experts, however, said that there's a little chance of this bug actually being exploited maliciously. Unfortunately, a quick analysis of the bug by an outside researcher agreed that it isn't likely the bug could be exploited, but they actually execute malicious code. Now, the analysis also found that the bug appears to stem from a flaw in the iOS logging component that uses the concat function to actually effectively convert the SSID string into a format string before it's written to the log file. Now, they felt that because the strings weren't echoed or into any sensitive parts of the iOS, the hacker is unlikely to succeed about abusing this. Not all researchers actually agree here. In fact, another research group from security firm AirI, for instance, said that the technique could be used to actually bypass security appliances that sit at the perimeter of a network to block unauthorized data from entering or exiting. Sounds bad. Now, the crash is caused by that, what researchers call an uncontrolled formatting string bug. Flaw arises when corrupted user input is in the format of a string parameter in certain functions written in C and C style languages. They use the format tokens such as pound s or pound x and can in some cases print data to memory. Now, the bug was initially considered harmless, but most recently researchers actually were able to exploit this thing. Okay, so let me, I want to start, I'm going to bring my co-host back in because this is not good. And if, the fact that it's in just the normal versions of iOS uh, makes it even worse. So I want to start with Curtis first because it looks like, you know, from an enterprise standpoint, this could be bad. Now, Apple has done some work to actually snap to enterprise requirements going forward. However, people still enter the Wi-Fi IDs themselves and, and sometimes they connect to different networks outside of their organization uh, before they're actually presented to MDM or other software that controls the device. Is this surprising that this even bug exists, Curtis? Surprising that in 2021, uh, large enterprise developers aren't doing type checking? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think that's surprising. Um, that would seem to me to be falling into the basic blocking and tackling category of professional work. Um, with that said, uh, I tend to agree with the developers who say, or the security analysts who say that as it's currently presented, this is not a terrifically dangerous vulnerability. I mean, it, it would require... Um, the user doing something egregiously stupid, always a possibility, and there being an additional level of exploit below what's been discovered so far. I think the real danger in something like this is once this type of vulnerability has been found, you know 
that there are going to be uh, researchers out there doing every combination of characters possible to see if this is exploitable using different character sets. And to the extent that it is, it becomes more troublesome. So I think this is a, uh, a serious warning sign for Apple and its users, um, and frankly, more than a little bit of an embarrassment for the developers who let this get through. Yeah, I agree. I think that, you know, string formatting bugs in this day and age, especially ones that are revolving around tokenizing those, those, the strings and then checking the validity of the string, um, seems very strange to me, especially in this particular case. Now, Chibert, I want to throw it to you because now Curtis said that, you know, Hey, what users got to do something stupid here. They got to enter in a really weird SSID here, but is that, what do you think? Is that the only way they can get into trouble here? You know, I don't know. This is something that I'd be tempted to try in my home lab. See, one of the things, this actually gives me a real big case of deja vu. Because there was a hack back in, God, I can't even remember when, um, where someone used a username that would literally send formatting codes on an HP smart terminal. And it would actually force the cursor, the active cursor, up into the top right, left-hand corner of the screen, screen scrape a certain number of characters, and then return it at, into the buffer. Um, basically, they were grabbing valid user IDs and returning it back to a type buffer. So this particular one was going to do some really nasty things in and so forth. So anyway, going on, what I'm thinking is, has anyone tried this by putting those special characters at the end of an SSID? And in that SSID, will it still do the same type of formatting error and be able to get you into, you know, what is in essence protected memory? Uh, I could see this happening, especially if you're using a relatively simple Captive, uh, captive portal, um, the sign-on screen. Uh, a lot of the captive portals on consumer-grade Wi-Fi devices are not real sophisticated, and it's actually running on really old versions of Apache, stripped-down Apache, so I could see it happening. So I don't agree. I think this is a one of those tip-of-the-iceberg type attacks uh, I think as more research starts happening, I would imagine that there's going to be a few more ways of exploiting this um, just because I've seen it before. I've seen this type of thing before and we don't seem to have learned. I agree. I agree. I think one thing that's interesting here, you said, hey, let's see if we can add it to the end of the string. You know, we have, you know, I just had this device over here next to me that has a UPC code on it or a QR code on it. Where device can actually scan it using their phone. You know, what if there's embedded stuff in there, right? I mean, another question is, what if that's an you know people just go ahead and connect to it, thinking they're connecting to the device, and now you are, you know, you basically with a sticker, you've embedded some malicious uh, code that can actually allow allow for remote, remote execution or taking over. The oh device. yeah, and especially especially because there's a whole bunch of products out there that are being sold all over the place, where it's a little nice beautiful little chunk of wood has a QR code on the top but it's also an NFC um, device inside and you can program it for anything it's meant to make it easier for your guests and friends to go and sit up and jump onto your Wi-Fi but you can put anything on there you know I had fun using the NFC um, cards that are left over in someone's booth. I actually reprogrammed them using my Android tablet and I set it up so that if I got it, I slipped it into someone's pocket next to their phone and it got the phone to go and text me a message saying, hi, I've been owned. I could see that happening right, right. with other things.